Hello everyone, welcome back to a new YouTube cast. Today we're going to be having a look at Trap vs. Dear, best of five of the latest Korea play-in for the Dreamhack Summer Master Summer f uh, Seasonal Final. Excuse me. Uh, this is a qualifier match. It was a single best of five deciding who would represent Korea in the in the seasonal finals. Here, the top right spawning as the blue protos is going to be Trap, and the bottom left spawning as the red. Protoss, it's going to be there. So a little bit of a PvP here. Now we already see a difference here in the walling for both players. Trap going for what seems to be a more a modern way to wall. I think we could call it that. And uh, they're going for the the old school wall with the pylon in the back, making the pylon the least vulnerable out of any location. And both of these gateways a little more vulnerable. But the main thing that this pylon does is that you can build a battery on the low ground without needing a pylon there. Now, you might be wondering why is that necessary? It's a fair question, but the reason why that low ground pylon is so good is in case you're planning on actually proxying your second pylon, it's very nice to still be able to build uh, a battery without having to build an extra pylon on the low ground. So let's for a second here imagine that Trap wanted to proxy his second pylon with a stargate or just a fake second proxy pylon then he'd have one pylon over here his second pylon might be proxied in this area and then his third pylon would have to be near his main mineral line in case he wants a battery against a proxy oracle or just a regular oracle of his opponents so um, in that case he does not have a low ground pylon where he can build a battery to defend a quick nexus now he would need to build a fourth pylon which is quite expensive and does not fit well within the build order majority of the time so with trap building this pylon here sure he makes this pylon more vulnerable to any kind of stalker wall cops but how much do we really see that these days but in general it's just it's just slightly better honestly these days the this newer wall just uh, provides a lot of utility um cybercore is still in a safe position just like uh, their cybercore is in a safe position and perhaps this gateway is even in a slightly safer position and this gateway probably can't be attacked either so perhaps there is a proxy robo this also is a better wall but i'm not entirely sure of that we see that uh, pylon coming into play immediately so we see a pylon being built in uh traps main base it's gonna get spotted immediately by these two uh sentries ready to the left side what's their doing here they're going for a little scout. We have two adepts trying to shade into the main base. Oh my god. Well, they're not going to be able to shade in, but Trap will be able to get two workers here for free. Two stalkers will make their way back home. So, so far, Deer lost two probes and a pylon for free, which, of course, is not quite the start that he wished for. Um, is there a battery in the main base? No, there's not. So... Trap feeling confident that there's not going to be any kind of stargate. It's going to be in time. With the wall here as well, good start here for Trap, honestly. I mean, getting getting a pylon, supply blocking your opponent and killing two workers while not getting any real damage on your adapts, that's pretty much dream scenario. Now, these two adapts might be in a little bit of trouble if they're paying attention. Or I mean, if Trap is paying attention, so yeah. First shots will be uh, dealt out here by Trap. Trap in general winning every engagement so far in this game. Two more adapts are on the way. So our two stalkers are gonna move out. We'll be able to deal some damage on these two adapts. What kind of text do we have here? We have a forge and a robo. Nothing has been produced from this robo yet, but plus one is on the way. The other hand, we have a robotics facility coming out of there as well. Who's down five workers already? And it's kind of a big deal in PvP. But it's important to be able to kill your opponent with, with, with just slightly more units. Just a lot of the time, games still revolve around the, these eight gate pushes onto third bases. That could be a big thing here. Trap opening up with a prism. Does have four adepts out on the map already as well. So these four adepts could deal a lot of damage. I mean, there's four sentries out. Um, and adepts, of course, do one-shot sentries. Unless you use a guardian shield. In that case, you do need a fifth shot. Uh, if you have four sentries and a battery a lot of the time, good things will happen. Will guardian shield be used? Yeah, so you see. Requires one more shot here. Now, staggered shots will clear out two. I think at least this sentry will fall right now. A little bit of missed target fire, but four adapts for, for three sentries. That's a worthwhile trade. Um, no more scouting for deer here. Um, 
and even any kind of push that he might have had planned with these sand trees will now uh, be pretty much useless. They're realizing that there's a prism coming out. I'm not sure how he noticed, but this is a very interesting movement. Wow, it's going to be able to find it perfectly. Oh my man, a quick reaction there by Trap. Totally on top of that control with that warp prism. Look at this. Beautiful, graceful creature. Minding his own business near the rocks. Now, we have a couple of that's being dropped here. We'll most likely go behind this natural base and then every now and then just make a check. It's like, hey, is there any units here? If the answer is no, he might drop there. Um, he might do this once or twice. Oh, no, actually, he's, he's going to shade out. Oh, what a brilliant play. I love this. He's pretending that there's adepts in here and actually just shading in. Deer isn't having any of that though and just blocks it with a single pile. And now, this prism could be warping in a couple of Templars while I'm going for an Archon drop as a follow-up. Does not seem to be the case. We have three more Stalkers being warped in. Prism with two Immortals is out right now. For both players, actually. Uh, two Adepts are here as well. I don't like him flying through this tower like that. I'm not a big fan of that. I'm not a big fan. Two Adepts moving into action right now. Four stalkers are in the natural, two zealots in the main, immortals about to pop as well. Two adepts are going to shade into the main base. So they're going to force a block? No, they're not. That's brilliant here, honestly, as a start for trap. Ideally, he'd force a block with these two adepts and then drop the immortals in the main base. And then all of a sudden, these units can't come to the rescue. I think one stalker died here, one immortal is relatively low. There's no battery in here. None of these buildings are full walling, so that is good. But this is a single pile and powering, I don't know, like 60% of all the buildings that Deer has. So plus to end this robotics facility will be empowered. Deer's Immortals haven't achieved too much yet, I feel like. See a big supply lead here for Trap as well. Recall on that prism with the Immortals. No. Wait, what did he recall? I'm not quite sure. I think two stars not going to be enough to stop two immortals. One immortal. Oh my god. Just out of range now. <coughs> we have this move out here coming from Trap. There is one battery not in a great position. Second battery is going to be in a better position. Plus two is about to finish up for Trap. Trap's going to have a very powerful plus two timing here. Which oh, I'd be a little bit afraid of if I was there. This is still those, those two base timings. That if you don't have a battery ready. These can be really difficult to stop. No third base for either player. We might have a drop into the main base though. Two hallucinated Archons. Now we have battery overcharge available. And here comes Trap with plus two against plus one. Battery overcharge being utilized almost immediately. There is a prism here as well to assist here for Deer. Um, the start of this fight seems pretty good. Oh, does not pick up one of the Archons. Very sloppy play. He's fighting outside of battery range. At least the one battery still has energy. A little bit of a move command as well. Not the tightest micro here by Deer, who had a good start of the fight with, with plus two against plus one. No detection against two hallucinated Archons. Just a general supply lead here for Trap. It does not seem to be enough as Trap takes game number one in this best of five for the qualifier of the seasonal finals. Let's head into game number two. All right, all right. Game number two between Trap and Deer. We see Deer actually uh, doing the similar pylon placement as Trap did in game number one. So... They are learning very quickly within a series. Like, hey, wait a second, that looks way cooler than what I'm currently doing. It is kind of new, new school, but it works. It's a weird green glow around his neck. It's almost like it's some, some toxic wasteland or something like that. Oh, they both have it. That's odd. I think it might have to do something with the map. As you see, there's uh, some kind of symbol underneath as well. Second gateway is on the way right here for a trap. Second gateway as well coming down here for deer. And both players so far just uh, seemingly happy with uh, with their two gate expanse. Very little gas income, at least for trap here. Deer has slightly more, 15 on no, actually also 16 on the mineral. So both going for this uh, this pretty low tech style. It's most likely not going to be a stargate, at least not a very fast stargate. Um, you could open adapter that, could open up stalker stalker, even sentry stalker is going to be possible with an opener like this, but. 
in general, we're not going to be seeing very fast tech. That's something to keep in mind here. At least not proxied. So we don't see a single proxy panel on the map either. These speed zones, uh, speed up the probe, the trap sent out. Yeah, that new was a little too fast. Sadly, also a map where there's not a single uh, critter or a random animal walking around that is possible to kill. So you have the probe coming in, sees a pylon, it's like, well, did I make the whole trip for this? No, no, it says there, if you wait a couple more seconds, I can show you another trick. But Trap knows what the trick is, and he's not a massive fan of the disappearance act. So he moves back with his own probe. Two adapts do pop out here for deer. Just two more adapts on the way. Okay, this is a cool... A cool build order matchup here. We're gonna most likely be seeing the 8 adept robo. Against what seems to be a stargate. Actually also going to be 4 adepts for now. So the build that Trap is playing is somewhat of a... An older build. It, it's, it, it really delays your nexus. That's the issue with it. But it can do a lot of damage if, if it does go well. So... We'll see exactly what's going to happen here. First adept um, interaction will go in favor of Trap, who I think has one more shot extra left on one of those two adepts. Two more adepts are on the way, so is a battery. So decent setup here for Deer. I mean, he's, he's ready for everything. He's going to have two more adapts once these adapts hit. There's two more on the way as well here for Trap. But you see, the Nexus timing of Trap is so much later because he also got that tech before the Nexus, and Deer didn't. So, in theory, if Deer doesn't lose any probes, he's going to be in a pretty fine spot. The problem is that not losing probes against someone that's going to most likely save up two oracles is going to be pretty rough. Trap also somehow realizing that going in right now would be a mistake. Instead, it's gonna wait for his Oracle to arrive. Oracle will not see any of these adepts moving out, so that might be an issue for him. We have the first four adepts coming in. Oh my god, block just in time. Oracle decides to go home. Two adepts spot everything. I like the gateway. A lot of people will build a battery here or a pylon, but they would just die against those eight adepts very rapidly. Now, two Oracles are moving back home. 27 works against 26. This, well, this pine is going down fast as well. Eight adepts do a lot of damage, I can assure you that. A secondary wall. Is this a, a hole? No, this is not a gap. It looks like a gap though, doesn't it? But it ain't. And uh, a bunch of adepts did end up dying here. On the other side of the map, we have at least some adepts going down. So four adepts have gone down on trap side. Oh, all of a sudden, there's four adepts in the main base of there, and that's a real issue. Uh, battery is healing a fair amount, it's doing a good job so far actually. I don't think a single probe has gone on poor target fire on by trap as well. He we'll only gets two probes so far, I feel like he's done so many shots already. Battery is empty, so this one of them might be able to get one more, no. No. Only five kills for four adepts, but there wasn't really producing workers during all of this. So still gonna be down six workers. Now there's two oracles still on the map, which do need to be dealt with eventually. The way to deal with oracles is is obviously not two sentries in a base with a battery without any energy. How much energy is there on these oracles? Well, not quite enough to truly commit. But I don't think he even needs to do too much damage. There's three more adepts out on the map right now, which could be annoying if they manage to shade into a main base. There's no probe on oh on whole position as I say that. Here it comes. Four sentries will be able to save this main base. So we see the oracles hunting for probes. Get one, get two. We'll be going for three, four, five. Three, four, five. All the probes going down here, pulling the probes to deal with these adepts. Eleven workers go down so far, both oracles still alive. So three adepts for eleven workers. Now that's usually a good trade. These oracles are empty at this point, and I think the only thing Dare can truly do at this point is a prism attack, which he is gonna go for. There is three gates already out. Fourth gate is on the way as well. Twilight Council starting. I think Trap is misreading this. Why is he on the map? As long as Trap survives right now, he's going to be in a fantastic position. I mean, this is as all in as it gets here. From Deer Phoenix on the way. Another Immortal. No battery yet. I wouldn't mind a, a battery here, honestly. I kind of like if he would try to hold the ramp. Decides not to. Just moves back. 
I'm gonna try to defend, defend up here. I don't know, start pushing him away from, I mean, Trap just has, has a better army, better eco, more map control. I wouldn't mind if these oracles would go across the map again. Is there still... Oh, I guess one oracle did end up going down. Not sure how. This does not end up finishing. Here comes deer. He has a lot of force fields, so... Trump needs to be a little bit careful at least. Blink is on the way right now. Twilight is on the way for deer as well, who I don't actually think wants to commit too much over here. Um, as fighting against immortals does not really seem to be the answer, or not the re remedy to him being behind. Taking a very poor fight. Decent force fields from both sides with Prism, of course, neglecting a lot of that. Phoenix will be able to take down this Prism as well. Immortals pushing forward. Will be able to be used in the Prism here and probably can cut off some of these angles. Um, I mean, one Stalker does get lifted, goes down. I think we're going to see at least two more Stalkers going down at this point. Oh, yes, we do. I just need to be a little bit careful with the Prism as it does end up falling. One more stalker does get lifted. The immortals just push forward and I think at this point Trap is like, oh, it's nice and all what you did over there, but what do you have at home, my friend? I have Glaives on the way, I have another Prism on the way. Gateway count is in favor of Trap as well. He has more gases, more probes, but most importantly, a way bigger army and there's no real defender's advantage here for Deer as batteries go down. Trap wins game number one, putting himself on match point. Game number three between Trap and Deer. Being played on Everdream here. Trap up 2-0. Deer needs to win this game. Let's see what his plan is. To take back what is his. Well. To hopefully take this series. Let me see Deer move into a... A direction that is not his opponent's main base. Which is always important to see. Because then we might have some type of proxy over here. Now. Oh, this location. This is reminiscent of a of a proxy robo location and on the other hand we have trap which what seems to me either a stargate or just a regular proxy pylon so i'm curious to see what we're gonna be doing here being there scouts any close by stargate locations starts moving further away Cybercore is about to finish up and then we're gonna see what tech he decides on i love this probe movement by deer here Yes, this is a proxy robo location, of course. And we have an adapt adapt opener here coming out of trap. As a Protoss player, seeing an adapt adapt opener without any proxy is is absolutely lovely when you're proxy roboing because it means that their defense is gonna suck. The first two adapts don't do anything. They don't give him any map control, makes it difficult for him to scout. They are fully walling inside this just inside walling this probe, which, you know, I'm, I'm not completely opposed against here. Gets a free kill. First Immortal will start popping out soon. And we see Adept Adept into Nexus. Now, this is a little bit risky because we... This this is the same build that Deer did last game, actually. And now we're going to see if Trap can defend against what is the hardest build to defend against. And this is, this is not a safe build usually, what Trap is doing here. This is not a build where you go like, okay, this is safe against Proxy Row, because really all you have is Adepts. We have four Stalkers out on the map, or three Stalkers on the map. Oh, he's going to go into a Sentry rather than a Forge Stalker. Huh, I haven't seen that before. That usually is considered a mistake. Now we see the four Adepts are moving out across the map. We see the Prism is on the way here for Deer as well. Is there any tech coming out of Trap? No. Is he getting a battery? No, neither. He's not getting anything so far. Four Adept are shading forward. We'll be able to start fighting against these Stalkers. I mean, that's a nice start. We'll be able to get one Stalker at least. Tries to shade in as well. Sees the complete lack of a Nexus. Uh, this should basically be a big indicator that it is a Proxy Robo or some kind of 3-gate play. We have two more Adepts making their way across the map. We'll join up with the first three. Um, gonna try either trading or some, some kind of semi-base trade over here. Robo is on the way for Trap, who is getting two batteries at this point. Stops us 27 workers. So a lot of gas in the bank. I wouldn't mind if he pulls out a couple of workers out of gas. Five Adept are being teleported home at this point. Do we have enough energy for a Chrono Boost and Battery Overcharge? Yes, we do. 
a hundred energy in the bank here for a trap. Why does he have so little units? Why does deer have nothing here? What a poor execution of the proxy roll so far coming out of deer, where it feels like he just has absolutely nothing. No no Robo Bay as a follow-up yet either, which is generally considered a mistake. Against a Robo Defense, since the new patch, you can't really break the guy who has a Robo Defense. You need to do something with Disruptor, with drops, um, that kind of shenanigans, and we're not seeing any of that. Two more Adepts are being warped in for Deer. He's going to be walking into a little bit of a supply block. I wonder what, what Trap is thinking right now. I'd be very confused if I was trapped. Does he have a prism yet? No, no prism out. Second immortal is on the way as well. Let's see how this will end up going. But this is not looking too hot for uh, for deer here, honestly. He just has less units. I mean, he has one extra immortal and the prism is going to be big. But so is the battery with the overcharge. I mean, there's three batteries and then plus an overcharge, which basically counts as five batteries. So... Just imagine if there was eight batteries here. This this fight isn't looking all that hot. Mm -hmm. Decent force fields. Good start of the fight here for Deer. Now this is usually where the disruptor comes into play, where you can really drive your opponent a bit back and then start focusing down these batteries, especially in the new patch. Gonna try to see oh force field in the main base. Does it Decent force field, I guess. One immortal does get shut out, as well as a couple of other gateway units. We're gonna need to see the overcharge being used pretty soon here. First immortal might fall, otherwise, oh, sloppy force field coming out of the air here, honestly. Love the immortals, not even fully firing all the time. Battery overcharge putting in absolute work. It's a, a lot of healing. I wish we could see how much a single battery has has healed over the course of a game. Because this guy is gonna, it's gonna be a lot of shields that have been healed by this fella. Prism now does end up finishing and Trap is like, okay, if there's two Immortals in my main, that means you don't have enough Immortals on the low ground. Might be a slight overestimation of his position. As now he gave up his own low ground. Is there still a force field? There is a force field. A couple of batteries will be able to hold um, or help out these Immortals for now. Trap might still be losing. That move out was a little bit too much perhaps. We have another Immortal on the way here for Deer. So Deer right now is on three Immortals against a single one. Now, of course, there's a second Immortal coming out. Is Battery Overcharge available again? No, but it's it's mere seconds away from being available. And the longer the game goes on, the more the patches are going to mine out. We see only 120, 175 energy. Oh, I don't like moving up with everything here. Oh, trap. This is not the way. There is a slow response there right there. I, with the Observer, he definitely could have gotten a full force field down here and then taken position. Good micro by Trap. Activating two shields there. Now with the battery overcharge, should be getting focused down here by Deer. No, what a mistake. Why would you fight the army? Kick down this battery. So much healing being done here. And Deer doesn't really seem to be on top of his micro in this game. As I feel like he has way more opportunities. Um, so far already where he definitely could have broken his opponent and now all of a sudden he's down 20 supply his minerals are uh, yeah are almost empty at this point i mean we already see some patches disappearing and trap is saying not today not here as another immortal does get shelled down two immortals still in a prism 44 supply against 56 and Trap realizes it's time for a counter-attack. GG gets called as Trap wins the series 3-0 and qualifies for the seasonal finals of the Dreamhack Masters. Congratulations to him. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out my socials, they're all in the description. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.